Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Cry of Fear. If you may remember, uh, last time the game crashed, uh, which is, you know, kind of a pain in the butt region, but whatever. Forgot exactly what I was doing, but I did rewatch the last few minutes of the last episode. So I can see what the fuck's supposed to be happening. Ooh, was that an SCP over there? Or was that a computer glitch? Sometimes, man, this game... Like, I'll be honest. This game is alright. But man, it is not a technological masterpiece in any way. Alright, so we got Bedmans. I remember that from last time, vaguely. Then up the stairs we have... Guns? Oh, God, let me through, will you? Thank you. So I recently, um, I remembered that, uh, earlier there was this iconic scene. I think I played it back in, like, episode four or five. But there's this scene where a bunch of hands grope at you from below. And, you know, that's all creepy and shit. And, uh, I recently replayed, uh, the game. What is the game called? What? Oh my god, I am so lost. Why does this... Why do good things have to happen? No, wait. There he is. That's the best enemy in the whole game. Oh god. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. It's fair. This game is kind of a hunk of junk, honestly. Did I miss something? Oh, there we go. Okay. Now we jewel wield. Okay, there we go. Just gotta keep my head forward. Wait, is that where I use this key? I swear, sometimes. Again, recently we played uh, Half-Life 2, so... In that game is... A scene where a bunch of hands grope at you from below, just like in what I saw in episode 5. In Silent Hill, it's a bunch of mandarins instead of random unexplained hands. But, like, still. It's so transparent. It's just, hey, you guys remember this? Hold on. Saxon Avenue. Okay, that's where the first fuse is. I have misgivings that anything would require two fuses. How could it be, be that busted? Okay. I'm going to save the game here, and then I'm going to pause the recording for a little bit. All right. One moment. All right, and we're back. Took a little break there. Uh, but yeah, I picked up the M16. Now I can up. Now I can solve up to 830 problems a minute. And this appears to be a dead end. I'm gonna set that to two. 
you know, God forbid that one is able to have more than three things that they switch between. Like, let's not forget here. That's something that they took out of Half-Life 1. That was already in Half-Life 1. Stock, in fact. Okay, I've come back here. It's so annoying remembering where I've been. Because Half-Life was a lot more... Well, honestly, I'm not sure if it was a lot more linear. But it felt a lot clearer of where to go. Okay, yeah. That is the taller. They are absolutely fantastic enemies. You guys are motherfuckers. You guys familiar with the term peace and antipeace? It's something that uh, Eagle Raptor Aaron Hansen talks about during his show Sequelitis. You know, back when he still did that, does anyone remember that? Have I gone backwards to here? I have. Okay. What? Actually, maybe I should save some of that. Anyway, peace and antipeace is when... The video game shows you a regular challenge. And then shows you the harder form later. Like how in Mega Man there's a certain type of enemy and a certain weird thing that happens in gameplay. And they show you each one at a time. And then they show you both together. Anyway, yeah, that's a piece and an anti-piece. And like they had me fight the one taller in a hallway where there's not a lot of movement, just... Did you run into the wall? the hell? Seriously? Okay. Anyway, yeah. That's- that was my thought pro- Okay, he's here now. Is that like a shortcut here? Ronald Street Key. God, I am so lost. Again, I'm talking. I'm, I'm going to talk about Half Life. Nope, Half Life. Still wrong. Silent Hill Two. A little more because I uh, recently replayed it with uh, the girlfriend. Another monster closet, by the way. Uh, yeah, I recently replayed it with a girlfriend. Half-Life... God damn, Silent Hill. Okay, so that's how I came in here, right? Silent Hill has an excellent map system. I'm also going to say that they wanted this to be Silent Hill 2 specifically. Because Silent Hill is about the cult. And so is Silent Hill 3, 4. Sorry, I'm just getting confused here. Silent Hill 1, 3, 4. Origins. Homecoming. 
and maybe Book of Memories, I haven't played that one, are about the cult. Silent Hill 2 is uh, about a guy grappling with his own psychological shenaniganzery. And you might be able to see that there's a lot of psychological stuff in this game. Do I? <sighs> I guess I could have just quick bashed it with melee, but... I've already been here, right? Fuck. It didn't scare me, I was just... Salty. Because I wasted a shot. Because something about Sun Hill that is not represented in this game. Silent Hill had a fantastic map system. Fuck. To this day, Silent Hill still has one of the greatest maps of all time. Oh! This, yeah, this, this is correct. Oh, you can see his face. He's got eye holes cut in that thing. For some reason. Let's juice up. Oh, interesting. If you pick up one of their pistols and it's more full, they just... You just get it. Or never mind, you just get the magazine. I think, um, like, in, in survival horror games, enemies typically do not have ranged attacks. That is something that only happens in, uh, shooters. And that's one of those things where I think that this game might have needed a little better balance of gameplay. Or at least a little bit more awareness. I feel like I've gone back too far. <laughs> the knife is still here of all things. I am so fucking lost. Where is Ronald Street? Be honest. A lot of the a lot of the things that this game does is kind of atrocious. Like there's a not a whole lot of reason for a lot of things that this game does. In some cases, I feel like it did it because it does it because another game did it. But it does those things without really realizing why. Like, it does all the things... Like, this game does a lot of things that Half-Life 1 and Silent Hill 2 did. But it uses them just because. And it also tries to put its own spin on it for some reason. Where is this place? It's only been a week since I last played. You can even see when I say it. Oh. It's a Facebook. That may not be the actual name of that enemy.
But as you can see, their face is a book. Hence the name, you know? Much like Long Dick Johnson. It's a very self-indicative name. Nobody's dick is that long. Not even Long Dick Johnson. And he had a long fucking dick. Hence the name. I'm so lost. Fuck. Oh, one of the fuses is here. And this is the Ronald Street key. Okay, one of them is located on Saxon Avenue. What is this place? Oh, it's where that bug happens, right. Oh, and where that chain summon chases me? In fact, I think he might still be there. I was backing off, but I realized I just saved, so what's the point? I think this game needs a better lighting system. And a map, but who am I to talk? What do I know about video games? Okay. I know that this is Saxon Avenue. Okay. I fucked that up. Let's uh let's go back. Wait. Okay. Beep. Okay, Saxon Avenue. Here we is. That was a lot of wasted bullets. And only two guys dead to show for it. Yeah, one of the reasons that Silent Hill 2 does darkness so well is because Silent Hill 2 earned its lighting system. Or rather, earned it through the lighting system. Oh my god. Wait, so that means that I can... Okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a little silly. Stub my toe. That means that I can get my... Take this and get this back. through here. Fuck. Wait. Yeah. Why, why does this game have such a limited inventory? 
like it's it's an illusion of difficulty it artificially adds difficulty to this game because the phone you can't drop the phone even when it's out of battery it is still taking up space in your inventory no matter what you can't get rid of that phone so it's always going to be there and yet it's always taking up an inventory slot Silent Hill 2 also features characters that start with something in their inventory. However, Silent Hill 2 has a unlimited inventory. It doesn't take up space, it just is in there. Oh wait, no, over here is the right way. Alright, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to get back. So yeah, it, the game doesn't actually... Because the idea of having an inventory with limited space is that the game has you choose don't you do this to me. The game has you choose what is important to you. So is health and ammo important? You know, if you're playing like a Skyrim, you know, is it a whole bunch of brooms? Is that what's important to you? What is important to the player is why a game has a system like that. However, you're not actually allowed to make a choice in this case. You can only do what the game says. Which means that there's no real point to it. It's just a choice that's made for you. The illusion of choice. And if I can't get through this fucking door, I'm gonna go postal. I s certainly seem to remember shooting off the, the things that held it in place, right? Did I not do that? I want to load. Oh, for God's sakes. All right, hey, I loaded the save and backed up. Turns out that... I've already lost it again. It turns out the door that I was going to was that one. But the door that I unblocked is actually over here. I've already lost it again. It's over here somewhere. For fuck's sake, it's so goddamn dark. Here it is. See? There's the shovel. Anyway, as I've said, it's needlessly dark. Which actually just means that I could just load this game. Now where am I at? Sorry for wasting everyone's time, again. Why did I bother loading the save? I don't know where I am. I don't know why this game isn't more linear. Like, it, it, it attempts to have a, um... Wait, isn't it back this way? It attempts to have a, um... a path through it that like it's supposed to be like a Silent Hill game yep still not that's the idea with it anyway okay is it you
No, this is where I just was. The, the speed that you lose your run juice is absolutely in... That's just criminal. Okay, yeah, it leads back to here. Actually, wait, why don't we just... What was that noise? Yeah, like, your ability to sprint is so... not what your character needs. Because, like, I know it's meant to make you feel scared, but it has never once scared me. It has more just annoyed me. In combat, you're not sprinting because it removes your ability to aim very well. And your movement speed in, you know, when just walking is fine as long as you are in combat. I'm having to look at the road signs. I can't get away from playing Morrowind, it seems. Okay, right. I remember now. To go down here. But yeah, like, there's a lot of backtracking and, like, I don't know where the fuck to go in this game. Like, th this is now the second time where I've had this big, long sequence of where the fuck am I? It's the apartment. I've got turned around. The apartment building was pretty bad. I admit. Some of that was my fault. You know, and that's fine. That's me being a dumbass. Nice. Oh, wow. Well. And also, some of it was uh, some questionable game design choices, but... This game almost wants to be not quite open world. Like, if this game is open world, then Silent Hill is open world. And I don't think that it is. I'm shooting like an idiot. Hold on. There, see? It's just two shots to the chest. Don't need to make it complicated. Oh! We saw the animation there. Where he shot himself in the head. Okay, so now we drop... I'm thinking this. And then we run this back to Waspet Gardens. Okay. That's a little smarter. But the fact that you go and undo a previous puzzle to do a, a later puzzle is just kind of weird, you know? And again, there is still no map. Like, because in Silent Hill... Aha, I didn't say Half-Life that time. But in Silent Hill... You always had a map. And as I said, it was an incredibly robust map system. Because it would cross off doors for you. Like, if you would try a door and it was broken and unable to be opened... Then it would be crossed off the map and you wouldn't have to think about it ever again. Or alternatively, if you tried it and it was locked, it would tell you that so you know that when you get a key, you can come back and try that door again. And usually it'd be pretty obvious, like the heavy brass door goes to the heavy brass key, that sort of thing. And sometimes if it was really obvious, the game would even give you little clues about it. Like, hey, maybe try this key, idiot. Oh, God. So I'm just going to keep going until I get... Both of these, huh? So there's the statue, so the door should be over here, right? Indeed it is. What? No. It's 
Something shouldn't be blocking the door. Why did good things happen? No. Why did good people have bad things happen to them? There. That's a lot better. That way I don't fuck it up. I just want to say good first, you know? Oh, God. Every time. This game has such problems, man. But now, progress is being made. At long, bloody last. It was very nice to go back to Sound Hill 2. That game is, uh, n pretty good. I was gonna say nearly perfect, but I don't know if it's that good. Um, cause as a game, it honestly sucks. We've talked about this in the past, but, uh, yeah, Silent Hill has some problems in gameplay, but all of those are very intentional. So, who actually cares, right? That's not important. But Silent Hill 2 still has one of the greatest stories. Why would it be an electric clock that needs two fuses of all things? Del Jogo Misterioso. I'm trying to, f I'm trying to like run like Doom Guy here to maybe avoid getting shot at, but I'm also using my friend the Escalator. I'm aware of that, by the way. That's not the word for escalator in Spanish. At least I think so. It's just me saying uh, words in a way that isn't human, like I usually do. Okay, so now I've got to go back there and get that key that I dropped to pick up the stupid fuse. Waspit Gardens. I've been noticing, uh, I don't know if it was on camera or not, but I saw quite a few fellows walk through cars, and that was pretty bad. Oh, Jesus, God, and... Let's talk about Silent Hill 2 some more. In Silent Hill 2, uh, your character will slow down and... Oh no, they won't. After a while after sprinting, your character never loses their speed. They just keep booking it. They stop to pant and their chest will heave when you stop, but... It's just a good detail. And when you sprint for too long, they'll, they'll pant as well, but... Again, that doesn't actually do anything. They're just... Fine. Like, I, I recently went back to ODST after, um, actually, you, you would have seen, well, I assume, because uh, I posted that video about how I beat ODST on Legendary and put that, like, bounty out that if I ever beat a lasso game, I'll get a uh, Halo tattoo. Okay, I'm right. Honestly, that save could be a little faster. Okay. I'm thinking about taking a quick break again to maybe figure out what I'm supposed to do. Why don't I, in fact? 
One moment, everyone. 